Well, hey guys, my name is Ed, and today we're going to be taking a look at my updated game room for 2019. On this not-so-sunny day, we're going to be taking a look at the man cave, the toy room, and all the other stuff I collect within this confined area. Alright, so let's just take a little 360 over here and uh, shut this door so we can get started. Uh, I am actually a retro game collector. I've been for the past 10 or 12 years. I've been collecting some vintage toys and I also play in punk rock bands and I'm an amateur YouTuber as you can probably tell by me having the channel and having some of that lighting stuff behind me. All right, so first up, we're gonna be taking a look at the main attraction in this room, which is probably my gaming collection. Now, most of it is in these tiny uh, cabinets right here. Um, if you're gonna take a look at the older version of my game room, the one that I put out last year, you'll probably notice one thing right away. There's a lot more boxed games now in here. I had to switch out all of the lose games because I didn't have space to put my box games in. Well, they're more fun to, uh, well, they're a lot more fun to really showcase, I guess. Let's start on top over here. Uh, of course, you're gonna be seeing a lot of toys overflowing into the gaming collection stuff, but I have most of my consoles up here. The Atari one I found at a garage sale just last year, and the Virtua Boy is one of my latest really killer additions to my collection. I've been wanting that console for the longest time. In the middle, you got the turtle stuff. I'm a turtle nut. You'll see I have a lot of turtle things. And uh, yeah, let's get started over here with the first cabinet. Over here we got some of the SNES games. I collect NTSC games too. Um, I am based in Belgium, so that's why some of this stuff might look a bit foreign to you. So yeah, I have like all the main stuff like, you know, Chrono Trigger and uh, yeah, Castlevania, stuff like that. Um, I really like the Superboy. I think I have both editions of that one. Then in the next shelf, we got the N64 collection. The N64 is the gaming system I grew up with. I would love to... Um, you know, expand on this collection a little bit more this year. Over here is one of my childhood games, one of my childhood one of my childhood favorites, Mortal Kombat Trilogy. And on the next shelf, we got all my Game Boys. Uh, I probably should like reorganize this just a little bit to have more of a color difference. Now it's just blue, purple, and uh, green, really. But yeah, over here are most of my Game Boys. I found. Over at the flea markets, they were a lot cheaper to find like a couple of years ago. Now it's really tough. And over here we got the Game Boy Light that is a Japanese exclusive. If we go one more shelf down, you see a little bit of more of that overflow from the Game Boy consoles, some Tiger handhelds, and of course the Game Boy Advance SP, probably the best thing to play any of your Game Boy games on. Then we head into the mainly Mega Drive selection of Sega games I have over here. There's some Genesis games popped in. Um, but yeah, I love the Genesis or the Mega Drive growing up. It's one of the 16-bit systems that just has a library of awesome freaking games. And yeah, you can't really beat it. Then, <laughs> probably the smallest 
part of my collection is over here, the PlayStation 1. I did play it a lot as a kid, but I don't really have too much of a connection with the system. I don't think I have like too many really rare games in here. I do like the 2D type of games like, you know, the X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Marvel versus Capcom, stuff like that, but I like to keep it 2D, although, you know, Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, stuff like that is always awesome. Here's some of the Virtual Boy games, some of my, gim some of my Game Gear games. And then we head into some of the boxed Game Boy games. Now, I'm going for a full set of the classic Game Boy line that's around 610 copies uh, for both the PAL and the NTSC releases. Now, I am within the last 25 of those, so I need 25 more to complete a full set of those games. My all-time favorite retro game has got to be Wario Land, so yeah. Uh, Game Boy, definitely one of my all-time favorite systems, and I love collecting for it. Then we move back on top with some of my NES box games I have over here. Uh, I grew up playing the NES 2, he had a hand-me-down system with a lot of games, so that was definitely fun to add. Now, I am definitely influenced by the Game Chasers, if you're going to check out my channel, um, I, I pretty much uh, learned a lot from, you know, Pat the NES Punk, um, AVGN, stuff like that, so I pretty much went for like all the games that like were popular on their show, I, I got the Snow Brothers game, I got you know, I got the Battletoads Double Dragon, you know, because I didn't want to get caught slipping and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot more of those, uh, you know, harder to get games that I have in my collection. But there's, you know, a lot more of these harder to get games I have in my collection, like Gargoyles Quest, I got Power Blade 2, I got a Lil Samson, a Panic Restaurant, probably all influenced by, you know, the Game Chasers because... It's, yeah, pretty much why I do YouTube. So yeah, here's the overflow of all the other box games and just more NES games. I am going for a full set for the NES, but I don't think it's ever gonna happen, though. <laughs> Uh, over here we have mainly Sega Master System, so yeah, Master System is the other 8-bit system that just has a ton of great games on it. There's of course some overflow of some Mega Drive games I can fit in over at the other side. You know, you got Sunset Riders over here, Turtles, Hyperstone, Heist, stuff like that. But yeah, I actually have more Sega Master System stuff than I do Mega Drive or Genesis. And yeah, that tells a lot about a person, I guess.
Anyways, this is also the backdrop for most of my videos and it changes a lot. I, I'll throw in like stuff I like. Uh, I'll, I'll pop on stuff I like on display over here like this little Grimlock figure, this G2 Grimlock Dinobot. He's been on the shelf for a while. Maybe he'll move, I don't know. And over here on top you mainly got my giant uh, toys like, you know, the giant turtles, the big T-Rex, some Ghostbusters, Ripley in a power loader with some aliens, stuff like that. Another Dinobot, but this one is from the Beast Wars toy line. Then we'll head a bit more over here and you can see a lot more toys flowing down. We'll start over here with these baddies. You got BA chilling over here in Rocksteady's hand. Um, but yeah, over here is another part of the collection. This is the glass case, which I still haven't figured out what to do with. They're basically just a bit too small to really showcase anything in. So Ikea make a bigger one. You know, so you can actually do stuff with it. Over here I have my Virtua Boy, I got the Rob, I got two of my most expensive games in here. Uh, which I picked up last year, like Mr. Gimmick. There's a uh, Super Multi-Tap in the back over there. And you know, you got Flintstone Surprise the Dinosaur Peak. Another one I really needed to get because Game Chasers made me uh, want to get it. Over here is my Game & Watch collection. I really love collecting for this system. You used to find them over at the flea market a lot and you can, you know, pick them up for two euros, but now it's getting just harder and harder. There's still a lot of them that I want, but the prices are freaking insane. And yeah, like I said, I'm going for a full set of Game Boy games. And over here are some of the more rare ones. So let's take a little sneak peek in here. Um, yeah, let's check it out. So we got an Atari Lynx, which I don't really have games for, but you know. Um, let's take a little look over here. You know, you got Metal... You got Metal Masters over there, some of the Roland's Curse games. Uh, Spy vs. Spy is actually surprisingly hard to get, as well as Micro Machines 2, Great Greed, Toxic Crusaders. Stop That Roach is also not too expensive but it's harder to find you know you got the Mega Man 5 Castlevania Legends which is just a pain in the ass to get really you got your kid Dracula and then this is a label variant for Avenging Spirit now over here we got the three most expensive ones probably you got Spud's Adventure right there you got Trip World which is a Japanese and a PAL exclusive and we got Amazing Tater yeah awesome then below that is just some stuff I couldn't really find a spot for. I got my Sega Nomad complete in box and a Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight is probably one of the more um, one, of, one of the more recent games I'm really into. Got the Sega Game Gear over there in the box with the battery charger. Oh yeah. So that's it pretty much for the glass case. And then we're going to be taking a little closer look to some of the toys I have on the shelf over here. There's more games to be talked about, but we'll get to that in just a little short bit. So yeah, let's move away from this little uh, gaming heaven. At least to me, it's a little bit of gaming heaven. And let's start over here. On top, we got one of these special collectors four packs for the turtles. You got the X-Men Blackbird Jet, a Necto 1 complete in box. Some other, you know, turtle stuff. I'm also really into Jurassic Park and some of my G.I. Joe stuff. I got the Tomahawk complete just without the box, but this is an awesome toy. Some Power Rangers. I'm not really too much into the toy line, but I do really enjoy the first season and, you know, all the stuff with the white, uh, the with the white and the green ranger, some toxic crusaders, which is also playmates like the turtles over here. I have the four main turtles and a store display that was actually in the store where I used to buy my turtles as a kid. So I'm very glad to get that. Over here we got the turtle blimp and then there's just gums and then this just zooms out into a turtle diorama oh yeah <laughs> let's take a little closer look over here we got most of the bad guys you got the big krang android body you got krang triceraton one of my favorite turtle figurines really um you got the technodrome one of the play sets and of course the other turtle play set which is the sewer play set Awesome. I this was mine as a kid. You can probably tell it popped some Jurassic Park stickers on there. There's 
a couple spread out over here. Um, this is also standing on top of a store display, which I got from a very good friend of mine. Um, he's active on Instagram, does just a ton of good. He does just a ton of really cool stuff uh, on his Instagram, so definitely check him out. Um, and yeah, you got the party wagon, you got some of the bad guys, you got, you know, some of the figurines I really liked as a kid that I displayed over here. Most of my other figurines are just in boxes. Of course, I'm going for a foot soldier army, so I'm trying to really build that. And then when we zoom out just a little more, you see that uh, over here is kind of where stuff needs to go when I don't have space anymore. <laughs> We got like a little table thing over here that holds most of my Game Boy games, but it's not exciting to look at. You can check out last year's, um, you can check out last year's game room tour to really see that. This is the Super Colossal T-Rex, and well, it is very cool, but it is super colossal, so you don't really know where to freaking put that thing. Over here, there's some more boxes I can't really find a spot for. Some Master of the Universe, the big Rob Deluxe set. And uh, then over here we got some more spillage of the gaming systems. Uh, actually in the back over here there's a lot of N64 games, some Mega Drive games that are loose. Here are some of the Mega Drive games loose that I think are pretty darn cool. And some more spillage of the SNES collection. Now these are the PAL cards, they don't have any end labels so it's really hard to display them and make it not look gray. Um, one of the questions I asked on my YouTube channel is which is the next dedicated toy collection, uh, which is the next collection, which is the next uh, dedicated collection video you want to see, and that is the SNES, so I'll be working on that and that will be out next month. Over here is my uh, gaming uh, setup, which isn't really set up too much, I'm still saving up to buy a TV, yeah, I know it's been even more than a year, but I keep buying stuff. I'm definitely more of a collector than I am somebody who plays games. I do play my Switch a lot and I do play all the retro games I get just to, you know, get a feel and talk about them in my videos. So over here are some of the consoles I do play, like my Mega Drive, it's the SNES, my favorite freaking system, and of course the NES, yeah. I do have like this thing hooked up that I could potentially put some more scarts into and really turn this into something decent, but yeah, I, I just don't play here that often, so yeah, here's a Boglin, one of the giant mutating turtles, some Cuphead figurines, and then we head into like the cupboards over here, which I'm not going to open up because they're probably overflowing, which is crap. <laughs> this is the thing that I used to stock just most of my cables and, uh, you know, controllers and stuff in there, uh, if I can get it closed up again, then over here we got my GameCube dedicated area, um, not the biggest collection but I do own like most of the games I really want for it. Moving over one slot we got the 3DS and the regular DS games. Uh, Pokemon is one of the reasons I got back into gaming as a teenager, well a late teenager I'm talking about like you know being 18, 19 and being like, oh, those games are still fun, I'll probably pick up a DS and yeah, I start playing, you know, Pokemon Soul Silver. Over here we got some more of the Wii U stuff, Injustice is a really cool game, and of course Shovel Knight. Um, yeah, I played the Wii U a lot actually. I got the Super Mario Maker pack and uh, yeah, I definitely enjoyed that system a lot. Over here you can see some of these lights set up because I'm making videos weekly so they never really leave the room. I got this really cool uh, playable floor mat which I don't really use to play but you know it breaks the sound just a little bit so you have less echo in the videos. Um, most of my most of my video stuff is really DIY, like I got this mic stand that I hook just a uh, thing to, to you know, pop your cell phone into. I film everything with my cell phone and uh, yeah, just put, you know, some rubber bands around it so I can use it as a tripod <laughs> and it kind of works. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm doing it all DIY. Um, got most of this like cheap stuff. This is one of the directional mics I haven't really used yet or anything. I'm mainly using a lavalier mic right now, which is also just the cheapest one. I use a GoPro that I picked up over at a thrift store. No, I use a GoPro that I picked up over at a flea market. 
to, you know, capture my hunting stuff when I go out hunting. And I have some of these clots over here. So I got a green screen, which is basically just a clot. I went over to one of those stores that, you know, you can get like a four by four clot for 10 euros or something. I have some black ones too, just to, you know, um, hook it up over the collection over there. And then I have a green screen that I can work with. Um, so yeah, that's just cheap stuff over here is, you know, the NES Pal guy. Some of my YouTuber friends made this NES Commando, so that's awesome. <laughs> uh, over in the back, behind the couch over here is where you see the overflow of thrill stuff and behind it, you, you know, believe me, there's a lot more, but I just don't have the room to display it. And talking about displaying, if you're looking for really cool ideas, to display your collection you know if you want to know like what is the best way to collect some what is the best way to really display stuff for your collection check out this cart he does just dedicated videos on any system you want he has great ideas cheap ideas he has some cool vintage stuff that he uses he has some recycled stuff he uses even and his motto is collect what you love and that's truly reflected by his channel so check him out guys <laughs> So check him out if you want it. If you want some better display ideas, then you're probably gonna get from my video. Then we're heading into the, the kind of smaller nook, which I just have to cram everything into. I put some more of these IKEA uh, furniture things in because, well, I'm playing in a lot more bands now than I did a year ago. So most of that stuff is is out where where we rehearse and stuff. So I, I have more space over here to pop my toys. So let's take a look at that, guys. So yeah, this is really just the leftovers of guitars I'm currently not using. I got, you know, a Gibson SG over here if I want to record some stuff for my videos, which I do. I, I do like uh, most of the music you hear, you know, in my videos is stuff I record myself. And let's start with the top of the shelf over here. We got some of the Muscle Man stuff behind these three charts and some Dino Extreme Dinosaurs. This is... And you got some extreme dinosaurs this is over here too so yeah that was like a, a space i couldn't really fill in but these figurines fit in perfectly and boy do they come alive in this way now i did just pop in this little uh <laughs> ikea furniture set thing to accommodate some of my toys it is kind of restricting the areas beside it but hey it's all good you know um let's go a bit for with this bookcase right here you got your mad books you got some Bukowski stuff um, and you know over here we got uh, some Dinobots I'm collecting for some of the punk rock books I'm really into punk rock and hardcore we got some of these wrestling figurines some DVD sets um, I mainly have just cartoons on DVD <laughs> some alien stuff um, and here we have most of my switch collection because it grew too big my girlfriend was like hey you can't have this downstairs you need to pop this stuff all up your tiny room so yeah that's why you have it over here some small soldiers some music some music books like you know the ACDC anthology series over there and some more mad magazine I love vintage mad magazine stuff so that's why I have it over here and then the uh, probably new thing setting apart this video from last year's video is this new shelf thing over here over here, I wanted to make like a, a tiny dedicated section to like all the oddities that I don't really collect the full toy lines for, but it's just fun to have. You know, you have some skeleton warriors, some gummy bears. Those are actually rip-off skeleton warriors, so that's a bootleg. That's also a bootleg turtle over there. You got these sectors, some gremlins. You got some of the weird G.I. Joe figurines. Those are the big ones right here. Um, yeah, just a really fun way to display some toys and just have like a cavalcade of, of characters next to each other over here. So yeah, some of my favorite toys. This was one of the best finds I did last year. This is a bootleg um, skeleton force. No, it's actually called Skull Force and it goes for around like $100. It's insane. Over here we have one of my Power Ranger things I had as a kid. Uh, this is still my childhood. Dragon Zord, it is missing its tail, but it should be somewhere over at my parents' house. I really have to go look for it. Yeah, I like Battle Beasts and stuff like that. You know, that's a Ocean Warrior, which is a Street Shark bootleg. So, 
this is pretty much bootleg and obscure toy uh, central. This is pretty much the bootleg and obscure toy line central right here. So yeah, then over here we got some of the toy lines I wanted to display. Besides Turtles, we got the Jurassic Park Kenner toy line. I have some stuff over here, but most of it is, you know, acquired from flea market, so it is missing some bits. And uh, I bought some stuff over at conventions, but I, I don't really, you know, spend too much money on Jurassic Park stuff, though. Uh, I am missing the flames over here, but it's cool to have this compound. I found it over at a flea market, so that was definitely a cool find. You got the two Malcolms over here. That's pretty neat. Then we got some Thundercats. Thundercats, oh yeah. Um, I got the Thunder Tank, I got some of the bad guys, uh, again, I'm collecting these mainly at flea markets, so it's hard to find them, you know, with their weapons and stuff like that. I do have a Bengali over here, um, but yeah, other than that, I don't have anything too special for this. Then over here we got some of the sections, <laughs> then over here we go over to the Masters of the Universe section, which I have done a dedicated video about, so there's a lot more than what is displayed over here. Uh, these are just some of my favorite characters I have out, you know, you got He-Man, Skeletor, uh, Mossman, we got, you know, Mosquito is probably one of the more expensive ones that I do have in my collection. Many faces on top of Castle Grayskull, and yeah. Not much more to talk about that. Anyways, I thought this was just a cool way to really fill up this little nook in my game room. Um, let's head into some of the cases below over here. We got some of the dinosaur stuff, um, some of the Jurassic Park stuff I have. I do collect for G.I. Joe, but I, I, my focus is more on, you know, the bad guys like like Dr. Brainbender, Serpentor, Destro, Cobra Commander, uh, and some of the more 90s lines like, you know, the Ninja Action Force, stuff like that. So this is uh, probably going to grow a little bit, but uh, I'm not really looking for too much. I am looking for a lot of Ghostbuster stuff. So that's the things you can see over here. I got, you know, the Universal Monsters. I got some of the Ghostbusters over here with their Proton Packs. And then we move over into another <laughs> Turtles dedicated section. <laughs> um, yeah, this is just a mishmash of everything Turtles related. I don't really have too much room to display everything. Got one of my favorite uh, figurines in the back. Mutagen Man on card Minty and yeah just always uh, I, I always just look at this stuff and I, I keep looking at it uh, and I just keep looking at it and time flies by and then you're like oh, I, I didn't do anything all day because I was just looking at this stuff over here are some of my Marvel books and so of course some toy biz figurines uh, X-Men toys you know spider-man stuff awesome here's a little more dedicated <laughs> here's a little more dedication to some of the gaming stuff you know you got some of the collectible cards by nintendo some album sticker stuff and some more beast wars transformers um there's a lot of good books on game and watch which i have over here and another <laughs> turtle dedicated corner over here and then we move into yet another turtle dedicated corner because, well, I don't have enough space for all my turtle stuff. Over there you got one of these, <laughs> I don't know what the frig this is, this is probably for like a three year old or something. Um, yeah, and then we got some of my loose Toxic Crusaders next to some of the bigger toy books which are actually pretty cool, you know, the visual turtles history and the He-Man stuff. I really want to get like a Ghostbusters and a transformer type of thing of these as well. Over here we got the Spider-Man Daily Bugle playset and then we head into my CD collection. Most of it is actually upstairs in the attic but you know I uh, I also just have a lot of it down here. I am mainly into metal and punk rock but I, I you know I like classic rock and stuff like that. Uh, my band just released a CD over in Japan to rock it. Another reason not to fear the sky. You can probably find it over at, you know, whatever that streaming thing is called, Spotify. Uh, we're, we're playing a lot of shows and I am playing in some cover bands. So if you're in the 
Benelux area, that means, you know, the Netherlands or Belgium, and you're going to Groos Rock, Grass Rock, or um, Jera on Air in Holland. Uh, I am playing at most of these festivals, so yeah. See if we can meet up or anything like that, or come and check out my bands. Yeah, freaking yeah. This is my Walkman from, you know, when I was a kid. This is my little Walkman from when I was a kid. And just a little bass guitar in another door which if I didn't have the door I could probably put more shelves in um, so yeah so yeah that's pretty much the game room as it is starting from March 2019 and now I'm just gonna sit down because I've been talking for way too freaking long thanks so much for watching this little video right here and I hope to see you again on the channel so definitely hit the subscribe button if you're into geeky stuff and see you in the next video bye